much. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, introduce my guest um, and a guest of the Indie Conference, um, Don Goldworm, who ultimately has probably the most sensitive nose in all of uh, the, the fragrance industry, has developed fragrances for Lady Gaga, for Adidas, for Nike, for Mercedes-Benz, for Valentino, also some of the hotels you all may be familiar with. Um, there's a, 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 a term called uh, old factory branding, or old factive branding. Old factive branding. And I would love for you to educate myself and these wonderful people. What does that mean? So imagine for a moment, if you had the power to change someone's experience in an environment with your brand, imagine, for the purpose of this Congress and the purpose of this conversation, Absolutely. imagine if your business could make someone feel more relaxed or have the ability to make someone happy or inspire someone to stay longer and potentially spend more money. Imagine if you could make someone feel safe or feel like they just arrived home. This is olfactive branding. Olfactive branding uses the visceral language of scent to transform brand building. The way that it works is scent and emotion live in the same part of the brain. You cannot have a scented experience without an emotion attached to it. You cannot have an emotional experience without a scent attached to it. And so scent and emotion kind of like hang out like best friends within your memory, your olfactive memory, which is the largest and most acute part of your memory. So when that scent triggers something, when you smell something, you get immediately transported to that memory. And inside of that memory, you can tell me incredible details about where you were. You can tell me the texture of the rug, the lighting of the, of the room, the color of the walls. You can tell me everything that happened inside of that memory. But most importantly, you can tell me how you felt in that moment. So fast forward back to today, you have that scent trigger, you have the memory, you have the feeling attached to that entire experience floating around your brain. Imagine that within a brand context. Imagine when you have that scent trigger, you immediately think about a brand. But you don't just think about the brand, you remember how you feel about the brand. What's interesting about this little trifecta, this little kind of cool kids club, is that everything else in your brain happens somewhere else. Rational thinking, logical deduction, strategy planning, all the conscious thinking that we do on a daily basis for our business and our personal life including our ability to access and use language, happens somewhere completely else. The only other thing that hangs out in the Cool Kids Club is decision making. So when you have that scent trigger and you think of the brand and you remember how you feel about the brand, you make a decision on the spot. That's brand loyalty. And that's the direct effect of olfactive branding. And that's what we do. And you are one of the founders and partners of 1229, right. which is an olfactive branding Company. Company. Tell, tell the group, because I think it's an interesting story also about how storytelling is so important in the brand experience. And, and we develop brands through the visual identity, through storytelling, through helping to, to develop an essence for a property, whether it be a residential, hotel, uh, uh, restaurant, or even products. And we help to develop a story in a sort of more two-dimensional um, environment, where it could be words on paper, Storytelling comes from moving pictures, from books and, and illustrations, but to, to extend the brand experience for the hospitality industry, can you explain a little bit about the process? If you were given, say, you know, keywords, or there was a lens that was developed for one particular property in a particular location that can extend beyond what they see on a website or on a tablet, or the moment they walk through the door, as you're saying, there's this sort of connection, this sensory moment. What do you do? Do you, do you ask questions? Uh, do, is there a criteria that you go through to help, or is it an emotional thing? Well, what's interesting about hospitality is they have an opportunity that other brands don't. Right. Because in hospitality, regardless if you have one niche boutique hotel, or mm -hmm. if you have a myriad of hotels all over the world, you have the opportunity to become someone's second home. Right. So the second they walk through the door, they might be on a conference call, they might be on Instagram or some kind of social network, probably more so today, or an email, or they might be thinking about something else. So they might not have 
consider the aesthetic. They might have just gotten off a plane, so you know they're kind of feeling you know out of sorts, right. and they're not listening to what's going on. But you can't turn off your nose. Right. So the second they walk the door, they take a breath. They're like, oh, I'm home, because you are their second home if they stay with you when they go to that specific city or any city around the world if you have multiple hotels. And so what we do with the hospitality group is a similar process that we go through with every brand, but just keeping this kind of special quality in right. mind, is that we take them through a creative process. And the creative process has nothing to do with scent. Nothing. I don't ask one question about smell. The reason that I don't do that is because the people that are sitting across from me are generally not the clients. Most of the people that create the brands that we work with are not the people that consume them. So what you think your hotel should smell like or your brand doesn't matter because you might not be a 17-year-old boy or a 50-year-old man who flies around in private jets. You are the people that built the brand, so I need to be able to access your mind so that I can see the brand through your eyes and then give you back a scent that's going to talk to your customer. And so we have a deep dive creative process, which is a branding process. So I ask a myriad of questions, starting with color and texture, all the way to target market, which is hugely important, of course, because in the target market research, we have to look into olfactive preference. So what's really interesting about smell is you all think that you have subjective smell preferences. You'll say that what you like is not the same as the person next to you. And you might be right if you're from various cultures, generation, and living environments. But most of the time within a group of people, you're wrong. Because your olfactive preferences are based on the first 10 years of your life. So it's based on your living environment, your culture, and your generation. Which is super interesting today because children and the way they spend their time is evolving quite quickly with technology, so olfactive preferences are changing really fast. And the globalization of food is making it change even faster. Right. And so what we do is we deep dive into who exactly your target market is, and we pull out their olfactive preferences and we use them. And we use them to create sense that they may or may not like, but that they're comfortable with. So they walk into a space, they already own it. Right. It's theirs. Right. Right. The tricky part is, is that the hotel has its own signature. It's a brand in itself. And so we have to create this kind of pathway to allow them to make it their own. But at the end, there has to be the brand signature so that they've never smelled it before. They have the um, opportunity to create a new emotional memory with your brand, and then they'll never forget it. OK, understood. I think one of the things that we appreciate about you know extending the sensory experience for for guests is also the opportunity to extend it beyond just the sense of arrival beyond the first sort of uh, interaction with it which will take you to a place or take you or create a memory um, you know do you also create products that can be in or uh, influence enhancements of uh, amenity products candles draw liners, whatever, to really carry that out, but also potentially be able to have someone bring that experience home with them and oh, potentially yeah. share it with friends and family? For sure, because I mean, I think one of the missed opportunities today with brands, and it's not their fault, it's just the way that things have evolved, is that everything's digital. Right. So unless someone's looking at a screen, you may not have brand interaction, right? right. You may not have that recognition of experience right. that you just had. Right. Smell doesn't work that way. So if you're in an environment and you're like totally digging it, you had an amazing time at a hotel, you're obsessed with a brand, we give them the opportunity to take it home. Right. So sometimes we use traditional products, or sure. we make traditional products, like a candle, right, right. room spray, scented drawer liner, closet sachet for hotels but sometimes we do things that are kind of above and beyond so we'll take product that already exists and mm -hmm. send that so for last fashion week we made scented t-shirts for Fendi the t-shirts stay smelling for 11 washes the t-shirts were made for Millennials I don't know how often they wash their clothes and so it worked out really well that they have these scented t-shirts um, for other brands we create um, we can send anything that they already kind of own. So yes, we do a lot of clothing. We do USB keys. I did actually one for Lady Gaga. We have all these different touch points. So when you're in your own space at home and all of a sudden you're thinking about the wonderful experience you had at the last hotel you were at, it's because you've been unconsciously triggered by that smell and it brings you back. It's part of the whole kind of brand loyalty uh, Would strategy. You, are there opportunities to have multiple scents throughout the experience? sense of arrival being one to sort of ground you in that initial uh, moment and then potentially do a turn down service where you're providing a better sleep opportunity for someone 
by spraying a particular fragrance and maybe what would that fragrance be? Yeah, um, so the way that I like to talk to it specifically within hospitality is imagine if you're in your house. What you do in your living room is probably very different than when you do in your kitchen. Or your bedroom. Or your bedroom, or in the bathroom. So <laughs> you're having lots of different emotional experiences sure. within these spaces. And so a hotel is no different. Or a private residential building is no different. So we worked with um, Zaha Adid Artex for the 1000 Museum in Miami, and we created four different scents for them. One is the arrival scent. So it, that's the brand identity when you first walk in. Mm -hmm. And that's where all the products are based off of. Right. Then we had the aquatic scent for the aquatic experience. I mean, you imagine this is a Zaha Hadid building. So there is an aquatic experience. You have the fitness center, which is where you work out. And then you have the spa experience. All different, uh, different experiences you're having within one building or within one space. Um, we also make in-room sprays. So when you go to sleep, you want to have a different emotional experience as when you're up in the morning showering. So your shower gel and your body lotion that you use first thing in the morning probably want to be pretty invigorating and bright and easy and clean. When you go to bed at night, you want to feel more coddled and warm and soft and, and relaxed. So the mm. scent experience changes as well. So explain a little bit about how you, like, is there a university you can go to to train your nose to be an olfactive expert? So there is uh, one, two, I think there's four or five perfumery schools in the world. They accept two or three students a year. Um, our group is kind of small. There's mm -hmm. about 500 noses, and then we're broken up into groups. So there's like creative noses, and there's technical noses, and there's you know, noses that do GC, which is essentially copy a formula. There's all different types of noses. And then there's people like me who um, kind of like scent directors. So we have, it's kind of like in the fashion industry, when you think of a creative director, like a Carol Lagerfeld. Now, I'm not comparing myself to Carol Lagerfeld. I'm just, it's just an example. Um, he doesn't actually sew or cut or drape. He has a vision, someone else draws it, someone else puts it together, and they work on that back and forth, back and forth, lots of modifications until his vision is final. And that's what I do. So there's a handful of people like me that do that. And the way that we're trained, or the way that I was trained, is that I went to eight years of perfumery school. I had to learn raw materials. I had to learn the genealogy of the fragrance world, which essentially is like, if you see someone wearing bell bottoms, you know that they're from the 70s, or inspired from the 70s, right? Just because they're bell bottoms. We can do that with smell. So I smell something, I can tell you when it was launched. I can also tell you how to modernize it. And then we do a lot of research into sourcing and extraction. So if we pick a rose in Morocco, and we also pick a rose in the south of France, and then we extract them with the same method, why do they smell different? And why does that matter? Um, and then after that, <laughs> So I did that for about eight years, and that's when I was an in-house nose at Cody. And then I went back to school again. I like school. And I wrote a thesis on olfactive branding, which is essentially the idea of the company today. And I wrote that thesis, and then in part of that thesis, I studied olfactive preference, which is what I was talking about before. Because I was challenged at Cody, specifically for Adidas at the beginning, to design fragrances that appealed to 15-year-old boys in Brazil, the same fragrance for a 15-year-old boy in Germany, the same fragrance for a 15-year-old boy in Tennessee, and the same fragrance for a 15-year-old boy in, let's say, Singapore. How do you do that? Especially knowing that they all have different childhoods, they all have different olfactive preferences. How do you, how do you make a $100 million launch like that be successful on a global basis? And so I did a lot of research into that, and, um, and that's all I had to learn to be here today. All right. <laughs> Quickly, how, how, do you, how do you not short circuit with a nose that's as defined as yours in being exposed to hundreds of scents throughout a day? Are there ways to process that? Because again, as it also may pertain to multiple experiences even in a hotel environment, are there things that can bring you up, bring you down, trigger you to have a negative experience versus a positive experience? I know all of that is, you know, and maybe through your lens, but it may be different to those that are not trained, but someone that is trained, is that something that you have to sort of parcel out in your own mind? Yeah, so when, when you think about smells, most people are uh, most upset by bad smells. So you walk around New York City, you smell trash, you smell, you smell a lot of things in New York City or in any city, right? 
Um, but then, you know, my nose, I smell all those things. I also smell all the good things that everyone smells too, like the smell of food or flowers. But then I smell all of you. And you're like walking perfumes. You have your shampoo, you have your aftershave, you have your toothpaste, you have your facial products, you have your laundry dishes. I mean, you are so scented, all of you. And so when I first started working at Avon, this is before Cody, mm -hmm. I remember leaving one day, getting on the subway, going home, and coming back the next morning, like shaking. And I asked my manager, I'm like, how do I turn it off? <laughs> like, <laughs> now that it's on, like, I, I, can't, I can't do this. I'm literally losing my mind. And she said, you have to learn. You have to be stronger than your mind. When you leave this office every day, you have to turn your nose off. And I was like, you are mad. That's not possible. Like, what are you talking about? Like, it's the one sense that you can't turn off. How right. am I supposed to do that? And right. she said, it's a mind game. You kind of have to be a superhero and just turn it off. And it took me a while, but now I can turn it off. What, what scents or Most fragrances the can these members of our audience tune into to, and not to put you on the spot, but say you want to be happy. Is there a, something that could potentially trigger that in its most basic form? No. So that's where you go back to olfactory preferences. So if you Good tell me, so for instance, I was, uh, I was just telling Vince this story. I was sitting at an ad agency the other day, and um, my sister and I came in, who's my co-founder, and we were doing a talk, and we were all excited, big ad agency. They brought in the innovation team. There were a bunch of like cool kids that they brought in to figure out cool ideas for you know, the ad agency. And so they all come in with their laptops, and they, they open them, and they start typing. Now, about Eight years before, I had gone back to graduate school, and I saw the same thing. I got into the classroom, and everyone had opened their laptops and started typing. And I was like, oh my god, information doubles instantaneously now. These people are taking notes and researching at the same time. Graduate school is going to be awesome. And I, um, I realized a few days in that they were not taking notes, and they were not researching. They were online shopping. So I'm sitting here in front of this, ad, this group at this ad agency knowing that they are also online shopping. <laughs> And they are not engaged in what I'm saying. They're just like, they're completely over it. And so the chick, or the, the girl that was closest to me, I asked her where she was born and where she grew up. And she said she grew up in New York City. OK, so I took one of my blotters, which is like a long piece of paper, and I dipped it in one of my samples, and I gave it to her. And her whole face lit up. Her eyes got wide. She was like, this smells like home. She's like, what is this? And all of a sudden, all the other kids started looking at me, being like, what did you just give to her? What do you think I gave to her? I gave her the smell of gasoline. <laughs> she grew up in New York City. That's the smell of home to her. And of course, then all the kids wanted me to do it to them, too. Right, you know? And it became it, like a game. It can be infectious in a way. Because, but, but what relates to one may not relate to another. Exactly. So for her, the smell of happiness and the smell of home was gasoline. Yeah. For someone that grew up on a farm, if I gave them the smell of gasoline, they might think that I'm giving them the smell of a nightmare. <laughs> so sure. it's, it's very dependent on, uh, on where you grew up and, and your culture and your generation. I, mean, I think, again, it does round out the senses of a branded experience, uh, which I think is an amazing attribute to an overall you know, hotel uh, and, and residential experience. Um, we only have a few minutes left. Does anyone have any questions for Dawn? So the question was seasonality. To me, I always, and maybe that's my 10 years growing up, I think of apples or cinnamon or what have you. Mm -hmm. So that would be the scent that I might choose for one of our hotels. Am I doing the wrong thing by thinking what I think is right is right? Well, it depends what your end goal is, right? If your end goal is olfactive branding and building brand loyalty, yeah, you're kind of you're, n you're not doing yourself a service. But if your end goal is creating an environment based on seasons, and that's your whole kind of ethos for your hotel, then just make sure that the people walking through the door also have that same olfactive memory as you when it comes to the holidays. And it's not someone coming from a different part of the world and doesn't know that apples and cinnamon are supposed to be Thanksgiving. And, the, you know, and then you're doing yourself a disservice as well. So you, you have to decide what purpose you want scent to serve. Scent can be just something nice in a space. You know, there's Glade plugins are a huge multi-billion dollar universe that works perfectly well. And sometimes we have scents that we have to remediate. You know, there's a lot of functional issues that scent can help cover. 
If that's what you want to use scent for, that's fine. But if your end goal, if you really want to harness the power of scent, there is way more that you can do to build yourself as a brand. And in that case, I would say to keep the same scent all year round. Thank you. Great. Quickly, I know we're, we're close to overtime, but go for it. Sure. I'm really interested in that when you're creating a scent and creating a brand around scent and that scent memory, you're thinking, it sounds like exclusively about the, the consumer of that scent, if you will. And I think when we talk about branding in the hospitality space, we're also talking about connecting that consumer to a specific place. And we talked a little bit at the beginning of today about lo local, what that means, and redefining what that means. But I think with a brand, we're also trying to challenge what's comfortable with something that's new, right? And that's part of travel, right? To, to allow yourself to step into a place that's unfamiliar. And I'm curious to know how much you think about the place where the brand is located, if at all. Yeah, I mean, it depends on the brand. So we sent a variety of places in Hawaii. And Hawaiians are really loyal to the ingredients grown in Hawaii, as they should be. I mean, Hawaii is kind of awesome. And so they always want us to use local ingredients that are from Hawaii. We're happy to do that. There's, there's two parts that we have to consider, though. The way that your brain works, so I did a lot of global studies. If you give someone a brand new smell that they've never smelled before, they reject it. Mm. They say, no, nope, this isn't for me. It's too strong. I don't like it. Mm. I'm leaving. You never want that to happen within a brand space. However, you don't want them to say, oh, I know this smell. This is the smell of the soap I used to use in the south of France at that other hotel. You don't want that to happen either. And so you have to have this juxtaposition between giving them something new, but at the same time giving them something they understand so they feel comfortable. Now, giving them that something new, creating that signature, could be within the local ingredients or that local environment, and that's a great opportunity. But you still have to feed it with something they understand so they feel comfortable. It, 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 the sense of smell in that part of the brain is, is it's, it's seemingly simple because it is the most basic part of who we are and how we understand life. It's just a little bit complicated to, um, to use. But once you get it, they'll never forget who you are and they will feel like that is specific to that you know, local brand or that environment that they go to every time to be with you. Thank you. Great. Anyone else before we wrap? Someone else. Quickly, yeah. <laughs> So we've all walked into environments where like the, the smell is so pungent, like it can be headache inducing. Yeah. What is the delivery mechanism that's effective in hotels um, that you're using to deliver the scent? So it depends on the space, but that's not why it's too strong. So I can say within a space, if you're a modern building and you have a good HVAC system, it goes through the HVAC system. We atomize the way we do it. I can't speak for all uh, different agencies that either uh, perform ambient service, ambient scenting services or the like, but what we do is we atomize the oil into a gas. So the gas is lighter than air, it doesn't stick to anything, it doesn't have any allergens in it, it doesn't have any alcohol, I mean it's really easy. It can be on as strong as possible. Literally every time the creative directors of Valentino walk into a Valentino store, they tell me to turn it up. Every single time because it fits the space. See, scent doesn't live in a bubble. It doesn't live by itself. We can only create scents around the brand that you've given us. That's why it's a branding process I go through. The scent is the last piece to make the experience come to life and be even richer than it was initially. And so if the scent fits the space, you won't even notice it the first time even if it's super, super strong because it fits within everything else. If the scent doesn't fit the space, if the scent is separate than the rest of the experience you're having, it doesn't matter what setting it's on, it's always going to be too strong. And it's always going to be too strong if you don't like it. The thing about smell, and I talked about this at the beginning, smell and emotion and memory are all kind of floating around together with decision making. And then everything else happens over here. So your ability to talk about smell doesn't exist. There's no bridge between language and smell. There's only a few things you can say about smell. If you like it, no matter how heavy the scent is, how spicy it is, you will always say it's fresh. If you like it, it's fresh. If you don't like it, it's too strong. And that's it. Everything else is based on an olfactive memory, or it's based on some kind of marketing that you bought black sandalwood, and now that's the smell of sandalwood for you forever. There might not be any sandalwood in there. Totally my fault as well. I was in that world before. But if you don't like the scent, 
If you are the client of that hotel or that brand and that scent is not geared to you and you don't like it, it will always be too strong. You will never like it and it will always stick out. The scent has to work with all the other elements. We don't experience anything in life individually. Everything works together, everything's connected. The scent has to be the most connected so that it can keep being turned up, so it can keep creating the perfect environment, the perfect branding experience um, for, the, for whatever the brand is trying to create. Well, thank you very much. We really appreciate the insight. And I mean, I think it's a fascinating world that w we can appreciate. Uh, and I think, again, as you go through your day, try to be a little bit more aware of the smells that you encounter and try to connect the dots to see if it'll enhance um, your, your, your life or for that moment. So or thank your you business. very much. Or your business. Or your business.